Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to answer this question. If you need to add a new column or columns, which transformation will you use? So let's go to SSDT or bids and see what we have. Uh, let me cancel this out a little bit here. Okay, so as we know that the transformations are available in the data flow task, so we have to bring the data flow task. In the data flow task, we read the data from source and then we implement the transformations and write the data to the destination. Let me open data flow task. Now we are going to read some data for this demo from the SQL server table. Open the SQL, we are using OLEDB source to read the data from the SQL server table. We are using customer table. And we have column, first name, last name, address, phone number, and region. I want to concatenate first name and last name and generate a new column called full name. So I'm going to use a derived column transformation. Derived column transformation can be used to generate a new column or replace a, a, a column, old column with the new value. So what we are doing here, we are writing some expressions. We are putting first name and we are concatenating with the, we are putting space between them and then concatenating them with the last name. And here you have the option derived column and you see you can replace it, add a new column or replace the existing one. In our case, we are adding a new one. So let me name this one as DER and uh, call it full name. I can also change the data type of this column, what we created from uh, first name and last name. Right now it's the uh, NWARCAR. We can always use a DT underscore STR and then we have to give the length and code to convert to the WARCAR. Let's hit OK. Now to see if the column is added uh, correctly, put the multicast and between the multicast and derived column, let's add data viewer. Multicast is working as a test destination right now. There is no purpose. We are really doing it. Uh, the only purpose that we have here to show you data by using the data viewer. Let's run the SSIS package. Scroll on the right side and we see that we have a new column called the DER derived and we, we call it full name and that's the combination of first name and last name. So that's how you create a new, a new columns in the SSIS package uh, in data flow task. Now the interviewer can stop here as he got the, uh, the answer or sometime uh, they want to check your in-depth knowledge and say okay if uh, there is scenario you cannot write uh, the expressions in the derived column. You you don't have the, those facility, facility or functions available in the derived column transformation. But uh, we want to generate the new columns depending on the values of the old columns and variables. What you will do? So to do that, we have a uh, script component transformation. Let's bring the script component transformation here. What we see here, script component transformation can be used in three modes. It can be used as a source, it can be used as a destination, it can be used as a transformation. So in this case, as we needed to add a new column, depending on the values of the old columns, we can use this trans uh, transformation as a transformation. As uh, we will be using C Sharp and or uh, Visual Basic uh, uh, scripting language in this uh, script uh, component transformation, we can uh, perform any task uh, what cannot be done in the drive column expression. So that's the, um, the answer of this question. So we have two options. We can use drive column and it's very commonly used. And if there are scenarios where uh, those things cannot be done in the drive column transformation, we can use script task, uh, uh, sorry, script component transformation as a transformation mode. Uh, in the data flow task. Thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.